Social media catch up a minute. Yo, how's it going, John? All right, mate. Oh, there's the apple in my eye. <laughs> right, I'll just get on with my uh, thank yous uh, and then I'll have my guest on uh, in the next couple of minutes. Yo, Wayne Davis, how's it going, buddy? Good to see you, mate. Hope you're good. Well, I'll just do my thank yous um, before I sort out my guest. Um, big thanks for the support uh, to Simon Pardo of White Eagle Finance. They give quality financial advice for pensions, mortgages, investments, and protection. Check out the website at www.whiteeaglefinance.co.uk. Uh, you can quote myself or Motocross and Spear memories for free advice with Simon. So get a hold of Simon. Uh, big thanks to MX legend Stefan Everts with his S72 Gin and Vodka brand. Check out his website on www.s72gin.com. Big thanks to Lee Owen of Owen Developments. Uh, they specialise in supplying turbochargers to a global customer base, covering motorsport performance, aftermarket and OEM sectors. Check his shop site out on www.owenturbos.com. And also he's got www.owendevelopments.co.uk. Also big thanks to uh, Terry Smith. And Terry Smith painting and decorating. Also, big thanks to Craig Tripler of Jardine Conservatories. Check them guys out on www.jardineintalford.co.uk. Also, proud sponsors of American Speedo rider Mr. Luke Becker. Right then, hello from Greece to my mother and my Lainey Lou. Back tomorrow, back to normal. <laughs> it's been a while, hasn't it? Right. So I'm just going to show you a quick couple of videos just before Jorgen uh, comes on. Mr. Jorgen, uh, oh, what's that? Mr. Jorgen Nielsen, yep, sorry. He'll be on in a minute. Um, I'm just going to show you this if you check out my social medias and such. <laughs> Um, just before my man comes on, I'll just show you uh, the bike competition I've got going on at the moment. If you want to get hold of me for any numbers for that, you can uh, message me anytime for, on that. Right, just before I'm waiting for Jorgen to come on, he should be on any minute. I said to him, five pounds to be bang on, after I said my thank yous. Um, just keep you updated on the uh, our Motocross and Spear Memories BSMA reunion, um, which is now getting on. Uh, we're now, what, in the middle of July? So 4th and 5th of September at Whiteway Barton in uh, Newton Abbott and Devon. It's, it's approaching. Uh, people started to get excited. Been getting a lot of messages, so that's really cool. Um, I've only got, uh, we've got 347 guys booked in. The maximum we can have is 352. Uh, all the groups are full. Again, I've been doing some resorting. Some guys have been injured and things like that. I can't make it. I've replaced those guys. Um, I've just got five places left. Uh, <laughs> just see my man drop in there. <laughs> I'll bring him on in a second. Uh, yeah, I've only got five places left in the meeting. We've got 347 riders booked in. 
Plus, obviously, you know about uh, the uh, Legends thing on the Sunday I got as well with some ex-pro motocross stars and Speedway stars as well. So there's only five spots left total in the whole meeting, and that's in the uh, 250-500cc Super Evo uh, group. So, uh, yeah, if you want to get involved with that, just let me know because it's fast approaching, 4th and 5th of September. Right then. My man has just come in. I've seen him at the bottom of my screen. So uh, I will introduce him with the intro video. Here we go. You thought I was playing? Huh. Right, my man himself, Mr. Jorgen Nielsen. How's it going? Hi there. Good. How are you? Can you hear me all good? Oh, yeah. Perfect. Beautiful, beautiful. Great to see you, buddy. Uh, we had a nice chat off air earlier on. Uh, it was good to catch up with you. How are you now? Good, good. It's it's really hot here in Sweden, so it's been a really hot day, so it's it's nice to relax a little bit now. Good, good, good. <laughs> um, yeah, it's quite muggy here, actually. <laughs> I'm doing that, yeah. but yeah. Uh, how are you in general, then, mate? What have you uh, been up to since the racing days? Then, oh, a lot of uh, things. Uh, you know, I um, yeah, I stopped racing in eight, in ninety three, and then uh, you know, I had uh, for ten years I was running the Swedish official Honda team here in Sweden. Okay, yeah. So I was doing that for ten years, and then I uh, I've been uh, I've been very much into training camps and stuff, uh, and uh, yeah, a bunch of things. And um, the last eight years, I had I had a new project. I mm -hmm. I bought a house in in California, so now I I'm, I I spend some time over there in winter time. So I, I do like. Uh, motocross trips with so far only with Swedish people um, so they come over to my place and they stay at my house and I have bikes and everything there so I take them riding and um, uh, we do all kinds of fun stuff we watch races we go to supercrosses we do uh, nice restaurants and yeah all the, all the fun stuff that California has to offer so I, I sounds like fun. sounds good fun yeah I did it for the last eight eight years now, but now with the with this COVID thing, I haven't uh -huh. been able to go there for like sixteen months. So I've been in Sweden the whole time here. I've got a lovely uh, lovely load of uh, photos of you to catch up on throughout uh, the interview as well. So we'll get into some of them as well. Uh, some really cool ones. A lot of them you sent me. So thanks very much for that. So I appreciate you doing that. Thanks. So let's go to the let's go to the start then, Jorgen. Uh, how did you get into motocross? Uh, what was your sort of earliest memory of the sport? And can you remember what the first bike you ever had? Oh yeah, I had a <laughs> I had a brother two years older than me, and we we both rode. Um, my uh, my first bike was a, like a fifty cc, like a moped, and uh, I, uh, I I started. Uh, when I was like eight, nine years. Oh yeah, <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> I'm about eight or nine years there, and uh, this. That's old brilliant. Moped. And that's that's actually my father took that picture, and my that's the first wow. time I managed to do a wheelie. Uh, I was so happy that day. So oh, that's I asked brilliant. my father, please come with your camera and take a picture, because that that was the first time I 
I managed to do the wheelie. <laughs> it's really cool that you've got these pictures as well. Um, some of the guys I have to dig real deep on some of their photos and go on their Facebooks and stuff, but you got some cracking ones of when you were young as well, which is cool. Yeah, I was fortunate to have my father was he, he was actually an amazing photographer. He took uh, all kinds of cool pictures, also on um, you know road racing ra uh, races like. Uh, and, ah, right, okay. And uh, yeah, all kinds of motorcycle racing uh, competitions and took pictures. So I, I have loads of pictures of myself. This is a pretty pretty cool one, also. I was. Yes, definitely. Probably like nine years there, and uh, that's in my in the backyard of my father, mother's, and father's house. <laughs> got, got the perfect wheelie shot there. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 pretty cool. <laughs> um, I have got a someone's just commented there. Quite a few have just said hello and everything. Good evening and all that. Uh, Mr. Mark Hammond, it's just oh. said hi. Hi Lee, can you say hello to my man from me? Yeah, that's uh, that's an old friend. He he mm -hmm. was um, my mechanic uh, in the 1987 GP season. Good man. Very so, good. I know he's uh, brilliant on the old suspension and all that as well. Yeah, he mm. was. Um, I had a very good season in '87. I got third in the 250 GPs and. Uh, bike working really good all season and uh, i was riding a, a white power honda that year so uh, so mark was involved with you that season was that uh, obviously a, obviously a good season as well getting a, a medal as well yeah um i was uh, it was all between me uh, with, between eric gabors and uh, pekka Vekonen and me it was it was pretty close there for like half the season but then uh, eric slowly pulled away and um but for me and pekka it was close all the way until the end uh, but uh, i think i've got some good pictures of that is that as well carry on oh there yeah that, that's that's a pretty cool picture that's from um the french 250 gp in if and dick in 87 and i uh i was leading the whole like i don't know maybe 35 minutes there in front of Eric. Mm -hmm. and, uh, he passed me in the end. He was he was stronger. <laughs> so uh, that was a very nice track there. Uh, so we had we had a couple of nice fights, me and Eric. And but he was uh, he was uh, he was really strong and had a very, very nice, good bike. And uh, so that's another yeah. one with you together. Yeah, that's probably from the GP in Brazil or something, or maybe Argentina. I don't remember exactly, but it uh, seems like, yeah. <laughs> you had a lot of good battles with Eric Cabors. Do you enjoy racing him? Oh, yeah, yeah. But I got I got beat um, most of the time, but I, I beat him a couple of times that season. And uh, uh, But he was really strong, and uh, that factory Honda was really good also. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's uh, that's actually that's from um, the GP in Argentina. That's the it's uh, yeah. It was not a, the last one was in Sweden, but the second last one was in Argentina, and I was a little bit sick, but um, I managed to get second there, uh, second overall. So I, but I was completely exhausted after the race. It, <laughs> I, I I look pretty tired there, but I had my I had my trophy <laughs> there, and I, I was probably yeah. pre pretty happy with my uh, result because I felt like shit that day. But <laughs> some, I managed to find some um, energy there, and uh, I did pretty good. Definitely take a second place on a on a not feeling too good day at a GP for sure. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, I just uh, liked that track, and I did good starts, and um, yeah, it was a, a good day. Got a few more of you in the uh, there. Look. <clears throat> yeah, that's 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 definitely from Brazil, two fifty GP in Brazil. Yeah, eighty seven. Yeah, and I was you see there. I was riding. I, I was uh, riding Honda, but I had a white Honda with white plastic. Yeah, it was unusual as well, wasn't it? At that yeah. time, so it looked pretty cool. 
it was so i was mm. it was um the white power suspension was my um, main sponsor so I, it was pretty cool with the white and red and uh, the white power logo and mm -hmm. so yeah that's another one from that's the french gp again in the, used to love the camel bibs as well as well in the gps <laughs> yeah yeah it it's it was um it was optional if you want if you wanted to use them but they had they had like a bonus system so if you okay if you won or if you were, were like top five you got some extra bonus money and uh, all yeah. right so that's worth doing that yeah uh got a nice picture there that, as well from the backpack oh, yeah that, that's uh the year after in 1988 uh on the i was riding kajiva factory factory kajiva that, that year and uh that's uh, John van der Berg, I think, on the Yamaha. Did you have some good battles with him? Did you enjoy racing with John van der Berg as well? He was obviously a yeah. quality yeah. rider as well. He was so fast that year in 88. I think mm. he got world champion that year. So mm. he, um, but uh, yeah, but we had some good battles. Yeah, that's also from the Kajiba days in 1988. Uh, it was me, the factory team was me, Pekka Vekon and uh, Gert Jan van Dorn. And um, the bike was good. It's just beginning of the season, the first couple of GPs, it was uh, lots of problems with, with the bikes of, for all three of us. Like What's that? rear wheels broken, mm -hmm. uh, all kinds of problems. And uh, took a while to sort it out. Um, but the middle and the end of the season bike was really good. So, so how, how was that like going from the Honda to that? How good was the Honda then? Oh, I was, you know, in 87 there, I was on a production Honda, but uh, mm. we had a really good tuner in, in Holland. Uh, I love that 250, the Honda mm. 87. I, I mm. love that bike. It's one of the yeah, best bike I had. I think uh, almost uh, that I super good engine and um, the WP suspension was yeah it was I was really happy with that bike. You said obviously you were teammate. So, yeah, carry on. No, I I think uh, I won the first heat. the first GP was in Belgium. Mm -hmm. I, won, I won the first heat and then second heat I went into the gate and I was last and I came back to fifth I think or sixth or something. So I had a good start. So, yes. How how did that make you feel? Obviously, starting that well in the first one, obviously winning the first moto, coming from the back to fifth, obviously in a strong lineup as well. You must have been quite confident. Oh yeah, yeah. I uh, <laughs> but I, I was in very good shape. But we had some problems with the bike in the beginning that the engine was not running perfect. So we mm -hmm. took a while to find out what was wrong. But finally, we found out what was wrong, and then then the bike was super fast. So I. I uh, yeah, I was very happy with that bike. I so say you mentioned uh, have it being teammates. <laughs> Pekka Vekonen, yeah. Pekka Vekonen, yeah. That's I think that picture is from the the British GP at Hoxton Park, eighty-seven. Ah, uh, yeah, I recognise the old green yeah. thing around there. If you look at his his uh, tro trophy there, it seems like he won. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> It does look like that, doesn't it? I don't remember. I don't remember my wrestle. I think I was third in one heat or something, and uh, I don't. Yeah, I don't remember exactly. But I always liked that track at Hawkston. It was a very nice track for me. You obviously kept in touch as well. This is obviously later on. Oh yeah, Pekka was a fun <laughs> guy to be around. So we we did some training together and stuff. He was unbelievable. Um, Many times when we were practicing, I was way faster than him. But then when we came to the to the race, he was he was such a racer. He was he, he could find, you know, when when the start went off, it, then he found some extra speed. You know, he was mm. amazing in Pekka. Uh, we had we had a lot of fun together and training together, and yeah, just a nice guy. Yeah, hopefully I'll get him on one day. That'd be cool to get uh, Pecker on as well. Uh, got a nice one here. 
yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, carry on. I just remembered another thing that from the 87 season, we, yeah, uh, the last GP was in Sweden, mm -hmm. and um, Eric was already world champion, but second place was open between like me, me or Pekka. Yeah, and uh, the GP, it, it, it ended, we ended up in hospital, both of us, uh, that the Swedish GP. So we, no, we, did met, you? we met at the hospital. Pekka broke his uh, leg, I think, and I, I broke my shoulder blade or something. So he, so nobody scored any points, but uh, so he ended up second and me third. And we had quite a lot of points until fourth place. So, <laughs> so we, uh, that was, um, yeah, crazy, crazy day. You always want to do good in Swe at the Swedish GP, but uh, the home GP, yeah. Uh, ended up in hospital. Well, at least you uh, still were in the top three in the world championship which is uh, must have been amazing how what did that actually mean to you finishing third obviously in the world championship i mean um i started racing gps in 84 and i was seventh the first year and then 85 i was i was sixth uh, 86 i was fifth and 87 i was third and being on the podium for the first time in the world championship that's that's an amazing feeling i mean Very cool. Uh, top 10 is good, but then mm. top three is super good. And then like winning your first, uh, GP or first, first he uh, moto in, in, uh, that's incredible feeling that, uh, yeah, that's what you've been training for your whole life. And, uh, that's the final step, you know, to. I know you've obviously got a lot of history of uh, doing well in the British uh, shores as well. Um, I was yeah. obviously talking to you earlier about the your history with the the fox and hounds in Newbury as well, uh, with my friend uh, Adam Winslet, who's involved with that now. That was quite cool that you won there as well. Yeah, that's that was an uh, incredible day for me because <clears throat> that was in '84. I did. I think I did one GP in '83, mm -hmm. end of the season. Uh, I won the Swedish championship for the first time in 83. And then I tried a GP in Finland, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. But then 84, I did uh, the whole season except uh, United States. And uh, we had a, it was only me and my father. And we had a very, very low budget team. And uh, uh, we came here to the Fox and Hounds circuit, the English GP. And you know, I I, uh, I I remember I did a pretty good start first heat, and I was running third. Uh -huh. And then in the end, I I don't know, I got tired or something, so I went back to seventh. So, I, but I that was pretty good for me. My I mean, my first season. So, but then um, in the break there before, between first and second heat, uh -huh. I was talking with a Swedish guy uh, that was he worked for Olin's suspension. And I met him and he, he told me, like, I was a shy guy then. And uh, <laughs> he, he told me, why didn't you win? He told me. And I was like, what? Win? <laughs> me winning? No, no. Yeah, you can win. He said, you, I could see your, your riding there in the first seat. You, you, you were third and right behind those guys. And you should, you should have passed them. And, and uh, no, 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 I'm, I'm not that fast. I, like... But then uh, I don't know something happened and second heat I complete completely messed up messed up the start there and um, I was like I don't know really bad start and um, mm -hmm. I've seen a video there's a video actually from this uh, and uh, after like 15 minutes they they mentioned my name for the first time then I am like top 20 or top 15 or something and then. Mm -hmm. And then every lap I like I passed riders and then, then suddenly I was in the lead. And uh, I don't know, I, was, I don't know what happened that day, but I was so, I liked that track. And yeah, this, this picture is when I crossed the finish line and uh, I was like, I couldn't believe it uh, that I won. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> I have a, another cool memory here, this, uh, Right after the finish line here, I think it was yep. like a left, left corner. Mm -hmm. 
And I, I was looking for my father, you know, uh, and he was, then I saw him, he was standing there in the, in the, the corner there. And I was like <laughs> in, in shock. And I was like, I stopped by him and I, I could see him, his face, it, tears was running down his face. You know, he was, he was so happy. And uh, yeah, he, that's brilliant. He couldn't, he couldn't believe it either. So that was my first GP uh, heat win. Unbelievable. I was pretty young, young then. And, uh, but I, I need to get hold of that coverage. Sorry? I need to try and get hold of that coverage. You said you had some coverage of that. I'd like to see that. Yeah, actually, uh, I don't remember that guy's name, but a very nice English guy, he sent me a copy of that uh, race. So I, I have it here somewhere, but um, uh, yeah, he's, he sent it to me and I don't remember his name, but... Oh, I think that might be Martin that I mentioned. Did I, was that the one I mentioned to you about that he said he had Hawkstone on there and stuff like that? It might be the same guy. Martin Neary, I think his name is. Maybe, maybe. Oh. Uh, anyway. I'll ask him. I'll ask him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, it was very yeah nice day for both me and my father. I, I think, uh, yeah. you know, my... I think I, I didn't even have new tires. I think I, I had some old Metzler tires or something. I think I, I think I, I I used the same tire both heats or something. Uh, like I said, very very low bud budget team. <laughs> Made it more than more more remarkable at the time. It must have been a special feeling, like you said, for yourself and your family to go there over over to the, over to England and win. Yeah, very cool. Two. I think two English guys went. Uh, Jeremy Watley and uh, oh, Jeremy, yeah. Nichols. Uh, uh, what was his first name? I don't remember his first name. Um, Andy. Andy, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Andy Nichols. I think, they won. Yeah. I think um, Jeremy Watley won. Ah, oh, right. Okay. Yeah, Jeremy Watley. <clears throat> I got a nice picture of you there look, on the old husky. Oh yeah, that's from um, uh, eighty-five. What was that bike like, Jorgen? It was actually pretty good. I um, uh -huh. I signed a contract there with the factory husky and uh, did a lot of testing and stuff at the beginning of the season. And I, I was um, I was I was training. I was training a lot and I was in very good shape. So we sorted the bike out on this picture here. I don't, I think it's the Husky. F no, maybe not. I don't, I'm not sure, but I, we, we put on a Honda front fork, front wheel and, and the brakes because right. uh, this, the stock ones, the stock ones were not very good. So uh, I was very happy with that bike. And then, the first GP was in um, in South Africa, Johannesburg, and uh, I did very good. I, I think I I won the first heat, and then I think Jackie Vimon was second, and then um, second heat I was, you know, I really believed in myself. There, I thought I, maybe I can win the second heat also. But then I went into the gate, oh, no. and, uh, so I was dead last again, and I came back to like fifth. Uh, so I got second overall behind uh, Jackie Vimond. But then, uh, just, another, yeah. yeah, sorry, another. That's all right. If you remember, and keep going. <laughs> yeah, another crazy story about from that race. Yeah. To be honest. Uh, yeah. After the race, you know, everybody shipped the bikes in crates there to to mm -hmm. South Africa, and after the race, they mechanics packed them in in the crates again and put them in a container and then um, the day after we were supposed to fly home and then i heard uh, the day after i heard that they uh, they had stolen my bike in in they they broke up the container and took out my bike of all the factory bikes yamaha suzuki's or everything in there they took my crate with my husky so they somebody stole it so wow and, uh, yeah uh, so that was not good because I really liked that bike. And of course we had more bikes, but uh, you know how it is. You have a, like a favorite yeah. bike. <laughs> yeah. But that, that was pretty crazy. And um, 
I heard rumors that uh, it's still down there. Uh, I, yeah, somebody knows who, who have it. So mm. I would love to get that bike back sometime because that'd be cool, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> any time, any time would be good. <laughs> yeah. Um, Alec Young just come on and said that that would have been Kurt Nickel. So it was Kurt Nickel. No, no. it's not. It wasn't Kurt Nickel. No, uh, not Kurt Nichol. He he was not riding two fifties. So it must have been Andy Nichols then, because it was yeah, definitely Andy, Andy Nichols as well. Andy yeah. Nichols. Andy All right, cool. Sweet. Yeah, I've got a nice uh, picture of you down there. Look on the old Suzuki, burn bash in there. Beautiful. Yeah, I changed uh, bikes a lot there. Uh, Eighty six. Uh, I was riding Suzuki, and uh, um, yeah, I did. What was that bike like, Jorgen? Oh, I, I I liked it. Uh, mm. I was doing pretty good on that that bike, but uh, no wins that year. But I think a couple of second places. Uh, I think what uh, I think it was in Yugoslavia, GP in Yugoslavia. Uh, Jackie Vimon, me, and um, um, uh, Rinaldi, Michele Rinaldi. We were. Ah, yeah. We we were within one second, I think, in, in the in the second hit there. In the, we, it was really close racing. It was so much fun. Uh, so, and then the, um, the last GP of the season it was in Sweden, and uh, mm -hmm. I was I was leading in both heats there with like I was uh, twenty seconds or something, and I had bike problems in both heats. So I I ended up fifth and second or something. But I, I was in uh, yeah, very good shape back then. And I, yeah, I ended up uh, fifth. Have a good season in the back then. Yeah. Mm. So. What uh, riders did you, uh, did you uh, look up to any riders when you were young? Did you, were you aware of um, sort of the world championship, that type of thing? Did you have riders that you looked up to? Any heroes in motocross that you looked up to? Yeah. I had uh, the the Finnish world champion Heike Mikola. Ah, yeah. I don't know why, but I really, I really liked him. I had posters mm -hmm. and stuff from him in my room, and uh, he was just cool, uh, cool guy. And uh, yeah, and uh, very cool. Who else? No, it was. I think it was mainly mainly him. Uh, he was my hero back then. <laughs> who were who were your who would you say were your sort of closest uh, rivals uh, over your career? Then you're going to see you had some battles with many of the top guys, um, but was there any that stood out for you more than others? A sort of rivalry. <clears throat> um, you know, there um, eighty eighty six uh, there was uh, of course was uh, Jackie Bimond. he was really fast back then but then mm. eighty seven there like I said Eric Gibors and yeah, Hecker. yeah. yeah. some races uh, Rob herring he was really fast some some races mm. but he was a little bit up and down but he was mm. when he was fast he was he he was flying mm. and um uh, Michele Rinaldi was fast also sometimes, and uh, but it was uh, it was mainly Eric and uh, Pekka in '87 there, and '88 it was uh, Van der Berg and uh, Pekka and Van Dorn and lots of good riders that year. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Some great riders in there. Yeah, and then <coughs> later when I when I changed up to the 500 CC class. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, it was uh, Kurt Nicole, Jobe, um, and those guys. I've got a nice picture here, actually, of uh, the start here somewhere on the 500s. Oh, yeah, that's a cool picture. That's, uh, mm. that's 1992 US GP at uh, Glen Helen, California. And that's 67. There is me hole shotting in front of uh, Jean Michel Bale. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> I, I <was laughs> Love this picture. For, I was leading for like, a, I think almost a lap and then uh, Bale, he blew past me and then a couple of corners later, I, I didn't see him anymore. He was 
flying. He was so fast. It's impossible to to keep up with his pace. He won all three heats that day. Yeah, he's definitely a special talent when he's uh, JMB, as everyone calls him. But I've just been I'm trying to look in the background. I can see so many names. Um, I think yeah. that's um, is that Hansen. Yeah, 60, 68. Yeah, that's Hansen. And uh, I'm not sure if that's Jeremy Watley right, or right behind Billy. me there is Billy Lives, number yeah. five or five, five. Yeah, I yeah. think Kurt Nichols to the right of him. With the open face helmet, Kurt Nickel there. Yeah. I think that's um, Jeff Matasevich as well, isn't it? Behind. Yeah, exactly. Me and me and Marcus, <laughs> we had a <laughs> we had a fight. Both of us had a fight with Jeff Matasevich. He had he had really difficult time to pass us. You know, he, he yeah. stayed behind us the whole heat, and I think he was tired. He couldn't he couldn't pa pass us. But then after the race, I I read in an American magazine that. Uh, he, he said, I, I I couldn't pass those Swedish roadblocks. <laughs> <laughs> that's how he scored you. <laughs> yeah, he called us roadblocks, but uh, I, th I think both me and Marcus, we were pretty fast, and uh, he was just, he got more tired than, than we did, I think. So he never passed us. <laughs> that's pretty cool. So I can see, Mer I can see, is that Dirk Gherkins there at the back of the... Yeah. To the far left, I think that's Merv Anstein right next to him with the Premier pink helmet on, Merv and Anstey. Uh -huh. I think I can see Dave Thorpe right at the back. Yes. In pink, in pink there. Yeah. Yeah. And, is that uh, what I think Watley and Warren Edwards? I think that is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm not sure one. which number that was. Probably Warren Edwards. I think I don't think Watley was fifty-five. But I think that's Watley just behind him. Joby. Brian Wheeler. Joby. I don't know. I can't see him, but. Yeah, I'm just trying to see who that is behind, right behind you, with the AXO helmet. Uh, oh, mm. no, I don't know. I think 92 must be an American, is it? Probably. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, probably. Uh, mm. Maybe some of the guys I know. Oh, I Mark Hammond. Know. Mark Hammond's come on and said that Warren Edwards was 55, let's say. That's oh, confirmed yeah. that. That must have been Watley, Watley right behind him, I think. I can just see his helmet as well behind him. Yeah. yeah but a very good, very cool picture, that one. Very cool picture, yeah. So you, I think you sort of touched on it earlier, but if you had to say what, uh, obviously you had a lot of bikes, obviously you went into the 500s and did obviously very well the 500s as well, but did you actually have an out-and-out -out favourite bike that you really loved during your career? A favourite bike? Uh, it was probably my 87 uh, wp honda there uh, mm. i love that bike and also my um, in 1993 my cr 500 uh, mm. uh, we got got that running really good with some adjustments suspension engine and stuff so i it was very nice power and uh, got the suspension to work really good. So I, I had a lot of confidence in that CR500. It's a, it's a big bike, a lot of power. Mm. So uh, you have to, but my, my CR250 87 was, that was an awesome bike. What was that like for you then, Jorgen, when you went from the 250, obviously you were one of the top guys in the world in the 250, and then you went up to the 500. What was that like, that transition for you? Was that, did you take to it straight away or did you take some time or? I was a little bit mad at myself. I should have changed to to five hundreds earlier because uh -huh. I, stayed in the, I stayed in the two fifties too long, mm. and uh, I I was a five hundred guy. I I uh, my riding style and everything was better for a CR, for for a five hundred. Mm. So I stayed maybe two years too long in the two fifties, and uh, uh, yeah, I should have changed up to the five hundred. That was that was my kind of riding. So, um, just got to bring up that cool photo as well that we uh, that you, I, I had it and you sent me it as well. So we had uh, we both had that in the bag. <laughs> yeah, that's, very that's, cool. That's a nice one. Also, that's the U.S. Grand Prix at a track called Hollister Hills in uh, mm -hmm. 1987, mm. and that's that's Eric and uh, all the way to the left there and Rick Johnson and number five is me and then Pekka next to me. Beautiful. And um, that was um, 
uh, I, I don't know. I seem like I almost always did pretty good wrestles in in the in the uh, in the U.S. and also mm -hmm. England. I I did some good wrestles, and I had my favorite countries like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but this uh, this race there's a little, little a funny story also. Uh, okay, <laughs> you know, uh, obviously there was some really good American riders there, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, Rick Johnson and uh, Johnny Amora and a couple of mm -hmm. more. But then I think it was the first heat. Um, I was, uh, I think Rick Johnson had the fastest lap time, and I I, I did a very good lap, so I, I picked maybe my position maybe third or fourth or something so I, mm -hmm. I I yeah like you see on the picture here I um I was thinking okay I'm gonna stand next to Johnson because he when he dumped the clutch I'm gonna dump the clutch because maybe maybe he had some deal with the guy who pulls the gate oh so, uh, yeah <laughs> yeah so yeah. so um uh, yeah the five second card came up and then he dumped the clutch and I did it same time and we both got stuck in the gate. And, oh, uh, wow. <laughs> yeah, and it, I think Eric Hall shot, uh, he was leading and then they they red flagged the race. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, and uh, I mean, it was nothing wrong with the gate. It was just me and Rick Johnson who were, he, we were too fast, you know. And Eric was so mad. He was jumping up and down. He was... Was he? Was he? Yeah, because the red flag the race. It, I, like I said, it was nothing wrong with the gate. It was just uh, when they saw that Rick Johnson got stuck in the gate, they they red flagged the race. So wow, we got a restart and uh, Rick Johnson whole shot and I was third. <laughs> <laughs> and Eric was way back. So he was having kittens about that. <laughs> oh, he was so mad, and I can uh, I understand. He he was leading and. Uh, yeah yeah it was a uh, crazy i was didn't actually, go down well i was talking with i met rick johnson in in california maybe two years ago and we were talking about that and he was he was laughing about that also uh, i've just had someone um a peter axelson i want to say was the name he's not come up on the thing there though, but he just put hey jorgen oh okay <laughs> i say hi back <laughs> Yeah. There you go, Pierre. Hi from Jorgen there. Yeah. Um, I've just got my uh what I was gonna ask you about was uh numbers. Did you have any um favorite race numbers? I know obviously once you got into the world championships, you uh obviously had what um you finished the year before, etc. But was there any sort of numbers that you had during your career that were favorite even for when you were younger? Was there any specific reasons you'd like certain numbers? Uh no. Not really. No, no. Uh, no, not really. I um, uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> That's all right. Um, what were your sort of favourite uh, tracks then around? Uh, obviously in the GPs and at home. Uh, what sort of tracks did you enjoy the most? Oh, in the beginning, when I was I started racing GPs, I was mm -hmm. my, sand tracks were, was my favourite. Uh, I was. Obviously, we have a lot of in Sweden, so I was, mm -hmm. I did, and the more, the the more bumps there were, the, more, the, the faster I was. I, I did very good when it was really bumpy, and but then I learned, I learned to ride hard tracks really fast. So uh, in the, the those last couple of years, I I liked uh, hard tracks more. I think like or or like eighties uh, and nineties. There we had we we rode a lot of GPs on grass, mm -hmm. tracks, like in the Eastern countries and mm -hmm. Austria, Switzerland, Germany sometimes. Mm -hmm. Really fast tracks, wide open, big hills, uh, off camber corners. Uh, oh, I, I love those tracks. It was so much fun, but you don't see them so much now, but uh, back in, in those days, they were so difficult, those tracks. and. Uh, it was so many guys qualifying back then also on, on Saturday. Mm. So the tracks got really, really bumpy and, uh, mm. and you really had to be smart and find good lines and stuff. So, um, uh, yeah, but I, I always did good on sand tracks, but uh, I liked, in the end, I liked hard tracks more. 
Yeah. What about the tracks in the UK? Yeah, like Hoxton Park. Mm. I, I really like that that track uh, always. And um, yeah, I had my uh, couple of favorite tracks. There, there was one track in uh, Slovakia called. Um, uh, Kovaska Bistrika or something. It was such a that, that's for me the best track in the world. It's big, big hills and uh, mm -hmm. up hills and down hills and really fast and big jumps and off camera corners. So difficult and uh, but I loved it. Rode there a couple of times and uh, and then um, yeah, what else? Like uh, Unadilla, I loved Unadilla the, mm -hmm. the, the, the Jewish GP every year. Mm -hmm. um, that was a very nice track for me. Also very physical demanding and very technical and uh, um, yeah. Very cool. I've got uh, Christian Haverall Goods just come on and put legend. <laughs> <laughs> nice one there. Yeah. Um, what about uh, favorite racing gear then, Jorgen? I see you've obviously had, looking through just some of the pictures we've looked through so far, you've had some uh, some nice uh, looking race gear. What was your sort of favorite race gears that you uh, enjoyed uh, using, wearing, and being sponsored, obviously? Uh, beginning of my career there, I, I had, I used uh, Thor oh. for Halman racing uh, when I. Yeah, but then I went to Yoko. I used Yoko for 84, no, no, 85, 86, 87, I think. That was really nice gear also. And I, then I went to G JT for two years. But then the last two years I rode for uh, Wolf Sport for Bill Brown in England and he's He's, he was such a nice guy, one of my best sponsors ever, and uh, he treated me really, really good, and uh, we are still friends now, and uh, yeah, it was just uh, nice. He made some special gear for me, and uh, yeah, it was just nice stuff. I, I, I was lucky to have, uh, uh, when I was, uh, for many years, I used Alpine Stars boots. I, uh, had a contract with them and RI helmets and Yuko gear there for, for a few years. So I, I had pretty much the the best stuff, I think. Mm. Nice one, though. Yeah. It's a JT kit there, is it? The old crossbones on the legs, I think. That's JT, yeah, that's from mm. the, on the Kajiva. Yeah. Just kind of look what that one was, not Yeah. Oh, that's... um. That's that's from my first year in GP, uh, eighty four. Uh, I think the GP in Finland. That picture. So nice one. Yeah, cool, yeah. Love the uh, how I said to you that I remembered you uh, when I was growing up. I remembered you. Um, there's a picture in the background of this one as well. I really loved uh, your gear, and I mentioned to you obviously I really liked your uh, shoe helmet and stuff that you wore. In the five hundred photos, it looked very cool. I think you yeah, stood out. I always had a pretty cool helmets. Um, mm. most, most of the years, it was an Italian guy painting the helmets, and um, I I like to have like that Swedish flag on the helmet, and uh, that was like my my uh, style. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> very cool that one was with the Swedish flag on as well. It was very good. There you go. So another. Uh huh. Yeah. Really like that one. Still I got have, some good. Still have one of those helmets here. You uh, told me as well, and you showed me earlier on that you've got like you keep all the helmets, don't you? Of all the years as well, it's unbelievable. It's awesome. Yeah, I kept one helmet from each year I was racing, mm. so I have like twenty helmets or something here from one from each year. That's that's oh, right. one of my that's one of my favorite pictures. That one there. Uh, that's from 93 to 500 um, GPs. Uh, I think that's, uh, that's at the Swedish GP uh, in 93. Uh, 
I know you like this one as well, don't you? That looks very high, that one. Yeah, that, that's actually from uh, the GPF Namur. That, that, uh, was, yeah. that was a pretty cool track also. And uh, I was lucky enough that year, 93, to win one hit there. And uh, that was a very, very special track with mm. uh, three minutes plus lap time and uh, uh, such a nice place so difficult and uh, mm. but uh, yeah beautiful place to race i'm sure i could have uh, managed to see that live i think this might be normal as well by lots of it that's number yeah yeah that's <laughs> uh trees close to close to the track there uh, it was a little just a bit dangerous <laughs> track but uh, uh <laughs> it was it was fun to ride very nice track. I think that one is as well. I think coming down one of the drop offs by the looks of it, potentially, maybe, I'm not sure. Could be Namur or could be that track I told you about earlier, that, that one in Czechoslovakia, Czechoslovakia um, could be that, that track. So, um, did you actually, did you obviously enjoy that as well there? Because it was a special track, like you said, and I uh, wish they could still go there now. It was something just very unique in general, wouldn't it? And there was nothing else like it in the world. No, the, that track there was amazing. Uh, there's some videos. I think that they ran the Motocross of Nations there in 83. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a video on uh, YouTube there you can find it. It was a super nice track. But th this is an unbelievable picture also. That's <laughs> that's from Namur uh, when you pass that uh, cafe there or bar or whatever. Yeah, so cool. That's where Carl Chris stopped and had a beer his last time. That's it. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> you can actually see on the, on the picture you can't. You, you can't go all the way to the side on the tractor because then the, the spectators would touch you. And um, and uh, that was, so that's, cool. that's crazy. Now it's now it's supposed to be 10 meters, at, I think security distance between with, with, between the track and the spectators. But back then some tracks, it was zero. So Yeah, it wasn't a lot of health and safety conscience back then, was it? <laughs> 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 it was great for the fans though <laughs> yeah that's uh i love that picture it's uh, mm, that's brilliant a lot of the british used to uh congregate around that pub i remember as well yeah yeah a lot of drunk people there <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's the ones <laughs> got some uh, more uh, nice ones that's, that's uh from the swedish gp in the 93 also uh i won the swedish gp there uh yeah, that, that's also the Swedish GP. I, that's a nice picture also. I like that. Mm, very nice one. I like that one. Um, I like that one as well. That's a nice one. Yeah, that's um, Italian GP at Faenza in the 93. So, so obviously, speaking about that season, uh, Jorgen, obviously you come so close as well to the world title. Um, was it three points, I believe you told me it was in yeah. the end, wasn't it? Three points. And, and, uh, <sighs> uh yeah it was so close all season there it was mm. very very special season uh 12 very tough races and we were we did three hits then so uh so uh yeah it was a uh, uh, lot of stuff happened that season this is from um uh, uh the gp in holland in the mill i think i i won that gp also uh actually i um i was i was leading the world championship uh -huh. after, i don't remember which race but then it was a one week break and then we had a international race in belgium i think it was easter weekend we did the international race and um i i came over jumped there and and the, my engine locked up so when i when i landed i i i I mean, the, the bike stopped and I flew over the, the handlebar and, and I broke my collarbone. And, and we had a GP in Portugal the, the week after. So, and I thought, 
okay, here I am finally leading the world championship after all these years. And then I broke my collarbone. I thought it's it's over. But uh, this was on a Monday. We, we raced on a Monday. And then I called my doctor in uh, in Sweden and he said, hey, come home and we, we can see what we can do about it. So I flew home on Tuesday and on Wednesday he uh, operated my collarbone with a with a plate and uh, five screws. Mm -hmm. And uh, Friday I flew to Portugal and then uh, Saturday I uh, just rode a few laps in, in practice and then Sunday I did three motos there and I uh, with a with a collarbone uh, plated collarbone and I, I won I won the last heat so uh, that was uh, crazy. You must have been you must have been really happy with that because obviously you like like you said thinking it was all over to getting it screwed and uh, surgery in the week screwed metal plates yeah. and then go and race and then actually win a moto as well. Yeah, it's amazing what you. I mean, if if I was down in 15th or something i would never have done that and but i took any chance and i had i was lucky to have a good doctor and he played it it and it turned out pretty good of course i had a lot of pain but uh, mm -hmm. i was so mod motivated to score good points and keep my i lost the lead but i scored many points so um uh, yeah that's that's Stupid things like that motocrossers do when it's uh, <laughs> on the line, like a world championship. Then you you do pretty much anything to to uh, you know to win. Like so, that was the season as well, wasn't it? When you you had an issue, like you said, an issue as well. When you obviously only lost by three points for the world title. Yeah, I had a an issue in. Uh, I won the Swedish GP, and then the week mm -hmm. after was the was a GP in Finland yeah. and I was leading the first hit there with uh, at least 10 seconds last lap engine stopped uh, some ignition problem so I lost 25 heats there at uh, 25 points in one heat mm -hmm. uh, and in the end I lost world championship with three points so wow and uh, I don't know why it happened but uh, Things like that, they doesn't happen on the CR500, but it happened for me. So I don't know what 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 was wrong that day, but uh, some ignition problem anyway. So uh, but I, I did um, I did very good this, that year. I, I won a lot of heats and a lot of GPs. Uh, that that's a beautiful picture also. Uh, that. That's, mm. From that track I told you about in Czechoslovakia, uh, <laughs> district, yeah, it's the longest start ever, and then a uh, wide open corner and up big, big, big hill up, uphill with two jumps in it. And I, I, I think I whole shot all three hits there. That GP it was a second to last GP, and I won, won there also. Very nice picture as well. Yeah, very nice. While I've been, we've been talking through some of them pictures. Quite, I've uh, got a few of the guys have been uh, writing down comments, so I better catch up with what they're saying. I've just got a, a Travis Hyde here, but highly, uh, can you ask Jorgen if he's doing the Farley Vets? <laughs> uh, I'm not 100% sure yet, but uh, I might come there. Uh, I, I, I've been thinking about it for a long time, and uh, uh, now there's couple of Swedish guys they're gonna ride there and they asked me like if I could be their team manager or something so I might come there yeah it would be, nice be cool if you did yeah it would be cool yeah. hopefully we get to meet you in person be nice yeah. yeah it's only about an hour for me as well so that's perfect <laughs> yeah I, I, that's also a track I, I really liked we we, we had a mm. GP there in 86 mm -hmm. I think I got like third or fourth there or something so I, I like that track a lot good memories of that as well yeah. and obviously everyone's really enjoys the farley vets now as well with all you top guys coming over and even the americans and stuff obviously everyone buys into that and it's been it's very cool yeah. for the reminiscing and all that as well yeah <laughs> for sure yeah. um got christians also asked uh did he ever race at fox hill what 
in, in, in the Australia. UK. Did you know that five? Uh, obviously, I don't think you did race at Fox Hill, did you? In the UK. Uh, I don't know. Jorgen, he said Jorgensen. Maybe he mixed me up with uh, Brian Jorgensen, the Danish guy. Yeah, I just see he wrote you know, but he he, he corrected it anyway and put Jorgen underneath. <laughs> he did mean you. He was just asking you if you've oh, raced okay. there. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I, I've never been there. I think no. Mm. Never. Have you ever seen any coverage of it? The massive steep hills at Fox Hill that. Oh, I don't yeah. know if you've ever seen it. Yes, nice. Mm. Nice. But now it seems like uh, all the GPs are at Natalie Basin, or mm, they are. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. In the UK, yeah. Yeah. Um, Rick Wilson has also put really enjoying this interview. Class rider and a great guy. Thanks. <laughs> there you go. It's a nice comment. Uh, got Wayne Davis has put uh, from YouTube. I've still got the 93 500 GP review on Motorvision videotapes. That's what we all got in the UK. Uh, still often watch it. Epic battle uh, with Jorgen and Jackie Martins. Yeah, it was it was between me and him all year. Uh, yeah. and forth all the time. Yeah, big, nice, nice uh, racing there. So, I, I did an interview with him as well. Quite a nice guy as well. Did you get on with him? Did you um, obviously had a lot of battles and everything? Did you get on with him as well? Yeah, but in '93, there, you know, when um, <laughs> when things uh, heat up and uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> there was a few things happening that I uh, I thought it was not maybe fair play. So yeah, I was pretty pissed for a while there, but. Uh, uh, no, I have no problems with him now. I, I met him a couple of years ago. He's a nice guy. Yeah, nice guy. All happens in the heat of the battle, doesn't it, when it starts getting like that? <laughs> exactly. When, it, when the World Championship on the line. And you... Exactly that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, not, I'm not out there to get friends. I'm, I, I was out there to, to get World to Championship. To win, yeah. yeah. To win, yeah. yeah. Uh, got a nice little picture there as well on the 400. Oh, she, yeah. Is that you very wide there on the seven? Is that you? Mm -hmm. No, that's not me, I think. No. Are you on that I one? I don't know, actually. I'm sure I got it off your Facebook, so you've got to be on there somewhere. Yeah, somewhere there. But, uh... <laughs> you can see Joe Bay and yeah. Watley, Brian Wheeler, 4P. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. You're on there somewhere. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know. I can't. I can't see myself there. But... We're in there somewhere. Um, I was going to say about to you about. Um, obviously, you won a lot of GPs that year, uh, including uh, obviously you won at Hawkstone. What was that like? Obviously, uh, you used to get big crowds there at Hawkstone and the British GP, and that was a major event of the year as well in the calendar. Yeah, I loved it. Just. Uh, this picture is from the that Czechoslovakia GP uh, with me and I think I've got your I think I've got your there you go there you go yeah this one is from uh, Hawkstone uh, me winning there the my first GP there so that was uh, yeah like I said I always liked that track and uh, mm. I felt comfortable on that track from first lap in practice it was so much I had so much fun there. Uh, mm. Also back in '87, there when we did the 250 GP, I, I was just comfortable on, on felt good, and uh, I always liked racing in England. Uh, a lot of cool people, and uh, uh, yeah, just, had, just I, I got motivated, and I had a lot of fun racing in England. And it's it's important to have fun when you're racing, also. So I had a, a little bit extra motivation racing in England, I think. And the US. <laughs> That's very cool to win there as well. Hard, very hard track as well. I know you enjoyed the sand and rough, but it was uh, very hard, wasn't it? There, especially the race times you guys used to do them were pretty much three quarters of an hour. Then weren't they? They're not like the like they are now. <laughs> um, the the motos. Mm. We um we the. That Is that when you did three motos, wasn't it? Yeah, three. Was it 25 plus two or 30 plus two? But three, three races as well, yeah. Very hard. It was actually, very hard, yeah. For me, it was tougher than to ride two times 40 minutes plus two laps. Uh, yeah. 
but um, yeah. And I bet old Hawkstone was a bit too rough at the end of that day. <laughs> oh, yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, unbelievable. And but I I love those big waves over there in the corner all the way. In yeah, the yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I was like looking forward to that section every lap. Like uh, <laughs> when I <laughs> I had so much fun through there because. I, I was when it was like a little bit like stadium sections, like the supercross sections or something. I, I, I liked that a lot also. So I, I, I liked big jumps and uh, waves and uh, whoops and stuff like that. Yeah, it was very cool. Often, it? Uh, on the on the GP tracks, but sometimes it happened, and I liked it a lot. A few come to grief there. I remember seeing some video coverage of. Uh... I think 4P come off there in one year as well on the 500s at some point. I think I remember yeah. seeing a big off, big off there on uh, on YouTube. Yeah, but it was a bit of a something unique at the time, wasn't it? I think most of uh, the riders were out of shape there sometime during the. Yeah. <laughs> it was very difficult. Big ones, mm. big. Mm. Ones. Massive. It was very cool, and that long, long uphill there. Uh, yeah. You like that big hill, the massive hill, yeah. Oh, yeah, so much fun. Yeah. Beautiful track. Very cool. I've got someone on YouTube here, Zuma46 here has put, uh, hi, Jorgen. Uh, which rivals does he still talk to? Oh, uh, I uh, was quite a while now, but I, uh, Pekka Vekonen, mm -hmm. met him a couple of times, and um, uh, Heinz Kienegardner, he, he, he was really cool. He invited a lot of us, all GP stars, <laughs> uh, for a reunion a couple of years ago oh, right. in, at Ibiza. Uh, oh, yeah. He wanted to celebrate 30 years since he was he, he got world champion. So, oh, that's very cool. So we went there. So I met a lot of, uh, you know, Heinz Kienegardner, Jackie Vimond. So Peter Johansson was there, um, uh, a lot of nice people. So, Very nice catch up. But then now, in uh, since I started my thing in, in the US, I, mm -hmm. I'm i at the races all the time with my guests and stuff. So then I'm, I'm, I met, uh, you know, Brock Lover, Rick, jo Rick Johnson, and uh, all these old heroes. Uh, so I'm, I'm pretty happy. I, when I meet them sometimes, I talk to them a little bit, and uh, they are so cool and uh, really nice, oh. all of them. Uh, so, oh yeah, that's that's me, Jeff Stanton. Yeah, that's from uh, that was a reunion race in Italy, uh, uh, and uh, like a like a fun race or something. Yeah, I don't yeah. Know, but, uh, was it like three years ago or something? Um, mm -hmm. A lot of uh, good riders. Um, it's called Trans Borgero that uh, they had it for many years. Uh, that uh, race there and uh, a lot of uh, nice Italian people uh, and uh, just a very nice, fun event in the middle of the little town there, or little town, a big town. So we had a lot of fun there. And he's a he's a very very nice guy. Also Jeff Stanton. He's very nice talk to him talk to him. yeah i was just um looking as well at some other photos i just had here of you as well um if, so have you rode obviously i know you do your um thing over in america and that have you rode much yourself i've got obviously i've seen a few photos of you on your facebook and that have you rode much at all so if if uh, have you rode much much at all in general after my um career yeah 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 after your racing yeah yeah uh i i don't ride uh, here in sweden i don't ride almost nothing here in sweden but when i am in, mm -hmm. in california i i try to ride there because i i like the tracks there they are perfectly prepped and the mm. the, the jumps and stuff they're very built perfectly very safe and stuff and um now when you're that old and uh, <laughs> not in <such laughs> good shape anymore, you have you you need safety in the tracks. So uh, mm. 
I really enjoy riding over there in in California, but uh, here in Sweden, not not so much. I hope I got these pictures right for you. That's uh, you there. Is that you as well? Oh, that that's from that race there in, in Italy, that Transborger fun race. They they gave me a Suzuki there uh, for that race. Uh, nice. That's about three or four years ago, I think. That picture. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> when was the last time you rode then, Jorgen? Uh, oh. I ridden once in 16 months. I, I rode in California before I went home from California last time a couple of times and then I came to Sweden and I've been here in 16 months and I rode one time maybe two two months ago. Mm -hmm. But this this picture is here from my from my house here in Sweden and uh, this bike is one of those CRF 100s. I have a couple of those in my garage and I have a just next to my house there there's like a big grass field uh, mm -hmm. pretty hilly so I I made a really cool track there like a like a copy of an old GP grass track there. So we, we, me and my friends, we ride with those uh, CRF hundreds there. <laughs> we have a bit of fun. <laughs> yeah, and the, because they are so, they are exactly, I mean, they are pretty slow and bad suspension and bad brakes, but uh, we have so much fun. <laughs> so much yeah, fun. yeah. It's a lot of fun. Good fun. I managed to, uh, I was lucky enough when I spoke to you earlier when we was testing and you showed me your view and everything of this uh, sort of lake. Uh, it was unbelievable. It was a really nice location. It's lovely, isn't it? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Very nice. I've been living here for 31 or 32 years now at this, uh, this uh, little lake here. Uh, I, I love it here. It's beautiful. Oh, that's... Uh, Ah, oh, that's uh, maybe I don't know five six years ago. I that's actually my old um, 1987 uh, GP bike. I um, wow wow. I saved. I had that one here in, for many many years uh, in in my garage. And uh, this this picture is from a, a ride day. I went to a track. Uh, it was perfect that they perfectly prepped and everything that track and so I, I brought out my bike here and <laughs> I had so much fun on it. it it's still it was I was amazed how fast it was uh, so I rode there for a little bit that day and I had so much fun and then after that I sold that bike actually to um, a cool guy here in Sweden that he, he, he built a huge motocross museum in South in southern Sweden, a uh, big, big motocross museum, and he bought factory bikes and everything from all over the world. So he bought my bike also. So he made a really nice stand there with pictures and stuff. So I, I thought it's better it's on a, at the museum, that bike. So, and mm, so everyone can see it, yeah. Very cool. That was so very nice bike, that one. Talking about in museums. <laughs> yeah. He, that's my GP, my 93 CR500. He, he had that one, that one also there. And he had, yeah, like everything is perfect there. That you see everything's in top notch, everything. Mm, that's super, very good. Super cool place. <laughs> I just, uh, Mark, uh, Mark put as well, he knows already that I can line up a CR500 to ride at Farley. <laughs> 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 You know, I uh, I love riding. I still mm. love riding, but I um, I um, I don't like racing anymore. I just want to ride. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exhibition or what you call mm -hmm. it. Uh, uh, just want to have fun. I I, mm. I can still ride the bike pretty good, and I like to do wheelies and stuff <laughs> <laughs> and do some cool jumps. Uh, but I have still have a lot of fun when I ride. A lot of fun. So, a lot of the guys do sort of lap of honors there as well. So maybe you could do that. It'd be quite cool. Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe. Just have a little cruise around. Yeah. Or even being there would be cool enough on its own. Got a nice. Uh... Oh, yeah, that's. Uh, I actually wrote a book. Hmm. Uh, 
but my career and uh, and also <clears throat> after the 93 season there when I just missed out the world championship there and Mm -hmm. I, after the GP season was over, I continued racing. I, I always been racing a lot, you know, supercross mm -hmm. and all kinds of stuff. So I, I continued racing some races in different countries. And then the last race of the season was uh, a supercross in Stuttgart. Mm -hmm. And um, the year before, I was second in the main event there at Stuttgart Supercross. So I, I mm -hmm. did good there. And and but then. In the, I think it was in the semi or something. And I was, I was on a 250 there, and uh, something mm -hmm. happened right after the start. There was like mm -hmm. five, five whoops, and I, mm -hmm. I, um, in practice there, we, a couple of guys jumped all five of them, and I did it in practice also. But then I came around the corner there in the start, and I tried to jump all five again, and I came up short, and I crashed forward. Like and uh, I landed really bad and uh, uh, yeah I, I I could feel immediately that I was badly injured so mm. I went to hospital and everything and I it turned out I broke two vertebrae in my back and uh, I was par paralyzed from my chest down so um, that was uh, I ended up six months in hospital here in Gothenburg, Sweden. And uh, another like 10 years uh, with physio hours of physiotherapy every day and uh, for like 10 years to try to become good. I my paralyze it I got better and better after a couple of weeks or months. Uh, uh -huh. I, I started to be able to move my toes and feet and stuff and then it was slowly slowly progressing and the more it was progressing, the more I was training. You know, after a couple of months, I could stand up and uh, I, I learned to walk again. And uh, uh, it was just uh, very tough years there, a couple of tough years. So obviously, I had to stop racing. I couldn't race. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, I felt I had a couple of more years in the top there to do. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. It's, it's a dangerous sport and um, when you race you can't think about the risks you you think only like about winning like the first gp or the first heat you win in the in the world championship then then it's uh that's something special so then you don't want to do any anything else than winning and uh, mm. that, that was my main goal i did a lot of winning in 93 and uh, I was uh, very disappointed that I couldn't continue racing, but mm -hmm. at the same time I was I was lucky, and I was uh, that the pilot uh, that um, uh, you know I, that I, I didn't stay paralyzed. I, I, I yeah. got better and better, and uh, so uh, yeah, it was a couple of tough years years there, and every weekend. Uh, <laughs> I was uh, for many years. I was like, okay, it's 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 one o'clock now. The first motors, the GP, mm. now they start the first motor, and I was home here yeah. in Sweden. I, I I missed it so much. It was mm. Mm. I loved racing, and uh, I always always like like racing. So I missed that for many many years. And obviously, you came and you obviously came so close to the world title that year. Um, a little bit of luck and you could have won it that year and you must have obviously you've already had the third the second and you were probably destined to win a title as well it's, it was obviously frustrating but at least you've uh, got back to full health was the main thing as well and the thing is that uh, like in 93 there when mm. you won a lot of heats and i overcame mm -hmm. uh you know like that thing there with the collarbone i collarbone, won, yeah. won a heat but mm. with the collarbone plated and i, I was thinking okay can I win with a with so much pain and my collarbone plated? Then I'm gonna win all hits the rest of the season, you know. And I won a lot of hits, but uh, mm. I had those little uh, mishaps there, like in, in Finland. There, I lost. Mm. And uh, but then uh, we I, we did the motocross of nations, uh, the la one of the last races, 
and I did really good there. Also, I could I felt that I I could go I could stay I could stay with the best riders, uh, and uh, I felt I learned so much that year '93. So I, I was really looking forward to '94. Um, right. Yeah. What was that like? Obviously, um, we had some great. Uh, memories of your motocross the nations with the team Sweden. You had a great team as well. Oh yeah, that was a good team. Uh, Jukke Karlsson there on the one to five, and Marcus Hansson on the two fifty, and me uh-huh. on the five under there. So we, uh, yeah, it was a great team, and we we did really good there. It was actually we got third behind United States and Belgium, and it was actually very close in points. Uh, we were not that far from uh winning but uh we had a very good day i was i was two two in the in the 500 class mm-hmm. and yuki, yuki cause i think he was three four or something and marcus was six six something in the in the 250 so uh yeah that's from the podium there we uh i think United States had like eight points and Belgium maybe ten and we had like twelve maybe. So mm. it was it was very very close. Very close actually. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's a, that's a good that's Stephanie Everts and Marnik Berroads. Mm-hmm. And uh oh, who was the third rider? I don't I don't remember. Stefan and Marnik Berroots and yeah, Maybe Smets, maybe. Maybe no, Smets. No, it was hmm. Bernard mm. Devitt, maybe no. Oh, I might, might have been. I don't remember exactly, but cut off the picture there. But yeah, American team Emig, McGrath, and Kidrovsky. Yeah. Yeah. You next to Kidrovsky. I was a hell of a side as well from America. I think I've got a couple of um, pictures of you as well on the meeting as well. Um, there with. Oh yeah, that's me. <clears throat> yeah, that's behind me. There is Greg Albertin, I think. I've got a good one here as well with the, the. Oh yeah, that's me leading. Yeah, I was leading the first hit uh, until uh, one and a half lap from the end. I think uh, Mike Kudrowski passed me. So see him there that in the background as well. Yeah, that's. Uh, that was a, a good day. Very us. cool. You must have been very proud to get on the rostrum as well, and obviously representing your country is massive anyway. But to do to get on the rostrum as well is oh, yeah. very, it was an very amazing feeling. And I don't think I mean that's uh, how many years ninety three. That's uh, yeah, many years ago. That's I, I I don't think Sweden have been on the podium since then. I think that's the last time since Sweden was uh, on the on the podium uh, on the at the motocross of nations. I think. Yeah. A few more cool ones there. Uh. That's me in front of Marnik Berroots there. Got a black and white one as well from there. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool pictures. It's a nice one. That's a nice one also. Big jump one uh, down one of those hills there. Mm. Long, big jump. Um, I just got a... Uh... Yeah, uh, did you have any uh, superstitions at all in your uh, career, over your career at all? You're going to do. I know some of the guys have got some weird and wonderful ones. I didn't know if you had any superstitions at all. Mm. No, not really. No, I don't think so. You're better off. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I don't think so. I. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> That's a good thing. A lot of people uh, wasted a lot of energy on them sort of things, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so. No, I, I don't remember I had a... Well, that was a good thing. That was a good thing, trust. <laughs> <laughs> um, where did you sort of race? Obviously, you were based obviously in Sweden. Where did you race as a youth rider? What did you uh, race? Whereabouts were you racing as a youth guy? And did you do well from a young age in the sort of schoolboy youth era? Um, those pictures you showed earlier there, there were, mm, I, got uh, I did, uh, I started in 76. Oh, yeah. That's an old picture also, Rex. <laughs> yeah. Look at my feet there. I, I had, yeah, right off the face. <laughs> I, I started, you know, that's, 
I, I wanted to, to learn how to jump and I, I, mm. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't figure out how to keep my feet on the foot pegs. So every time I jumped, <laughs> this happened. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. This is an old Suzuki 50cc bike or something. I, I always got my, my brothers, he was older, so I always got his old bikes. And yeah, yeah. My, you know, I'm, I'm so grateful to my parents because they were not rich or anything. They were poor. And I, I, I mm. actually, I, I don't know how they got it together because we were mm. both racing, me and my brother. And, uh, mm. it's and um, so I, I had an ho old homemade, my first race bike was an old homemade uh, bike with a 50cc summed up engine in it. Yeah, this bike. <laughs> uh, that's that's also one of the yeah i was so happy there i, I was able to do a little wheelie there some good pictures as well wasn't it, with action my shots took, yeah my father took that picture also he was yeah he's uh, good with that wasn't he <laughs> yeah yeah so i i always say got my uh, my brother's old bike so i mm. my, my 50 cc career my the beginning of my career when i was i started racing when i was 12. Mm -hmm. I did not good. I didn't didn't do any good at all because I I almost never finished. I my bike broke all the time. So I was like, after every race, I was crying. And uh, then <laughs> the, the next week, and I tried again. And then I uh, I remember one one race. I I uh, oh yeah, this picture picture is uh, like. The last year on a 50cc bike, I had a little, little better, little bit better bike there. But uh, anyway, my my first year there on a 50, I um, I did a race and I uh, I didn't I didn't qualify for the A final, I like the main final. I I qualified for the B group. Okay. So I I um, but I was dicing there all 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 that model with with another guy but i i ended up just losing by by a wheel or something to this guy mm -hmm. but i got second there so I, I i knew i was going to get a prize or trophy or something so <laughs> back in those days uh you know after the race everybody got together around uh, a, a huge table with prizes they they got mm -hmm. different sponsors it could be helmets or tires or oils or anything yeah i was so nervous when i was a <laughs> kid so i was so shy and uh shy and nervous you know so because i i knew i had to go to the, the to that table and pick something <laughs> and uh you know first those guys winning the a finals and stuff got the best prizes of course so mm -hmm. when it was when it was my time you know to pick something it was not so many good stuff things left. <laughs> so, and i was I was so nervous. I just wanted to do, grab something and and leave, you know. <laughs> and, uh, so I just grabbed first thing on the table there. And uh, when I came back to the to the car, I, I checked out what it was. I don't know what you call it in English, but it's it was one of those leather things you put on the steering wheel on the car. Okay. Oh yeah, covers yeah. This steering wheel cover. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I still have it here in my garage. Do you? Wow. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Sometimes I it because it's so many memories from that. Yeah. I remember how nervous I was. Um, <laughs> uh, but super nice memory. Uh, yeah, that's really cool. So, but uh, yeah, cool. this is from 76, one of my first races. <laughs> and then, um, so uh, yeah, I didn't do. I didn't do good at all. Like I said, uh, most of the times I ended up uh, DNF. <laughs> what sort of age did you get to then, Jorgen, when you um, sort of thought to yourself, uh, I could possibly do this as a career type of thing? How old were you when you sort of obviously were doing well and thinking about going on as a career? You know, I had uh, such great parents. And uh, mm. after, uh, after college, I, mm -hmm. I got a job straight away. Mm -hmm. and I, I was working one year and then at the same time time i was i was training extremely hard i really wanted to be a good motocross rider and then uh, about the same time there when i stopped 
uh, I finished college. I got I won the Swedish championship for the first time. Uh, I was 19. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was quite funny. <laughs> Um, yeah. yeah, one first time Swedish championship when I was 19, and then I felt like, wow, uh, mm. why not try the, the GPs and uh, stuff? And then uh, I asked my uh, my uh, father, and mother, if they would, if I if I stopped working, and I gave 100 percent on motocross, if they would support me until I would make my own money. Uh -huh. And that was 84. And that was the first uh, year I, I did uh, GPs. So, and I, I did, I did uh, good almost immediately at the GPs. So I started making some money and I got uh -huh. some sponsors and stuff. So my parents, they, they didn't have to pay for me for uh, just maybe six months or something. And then I started paying everything myself. And I was uh, 19 and, but uh, just, I'm thinking about it sometimes, how grateful I am, mm. you know, to my parents. My father mm. passed away 15 years ago, but my mother is still alive. And um, they did, um, yeah, it was my dream. And they, they helped mm. me away a lot. So mm. uh, without them, I, I would never have done the wrestles that uh, I did, you know, uh, so. My obviously, they were super proud of you, obviously, as well. Yeah, to go and do that. Fox and Hans, uh, mm. when I won my first heat, and my when wow. my father was crying, that I yes, that mad. was unbelievable. Mm. And, uh, very special, very special. Yeah, so anyway, I, I had a had so much fun racing uh, all these years, and uh, mm. a lot. I mean, motocross is a tough sport, you, you have. A lot of pain. You have injuries and stuff, and you. But it's uh, it's a beautiful sport, and uh, I just loved. I loved racing. Uh, I was a, a racer, <laughs> a real racer. Mm. Because yeah. I could uh, sometimes in practice and stuff. I was not that good, but when when they dropped the gate, something happened in my in my brain, and I was I was. <laughs> Out and out racer, yeah. I can, I can still feel it, but now I, <laughs> sometimes when I race in, uh, when I ride, but uh, you know, on a track and there's a fast guy coming past me, and then my 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 brain, my brain tells me to try to follow him. But <laughs> the, last, the last two years, I was able to calm down a little bit, bit because, like I said, my, I'm not in that good shape anymore, and. Uh, <laughs> My technique is pretty good still, but uh, my shape is not it's not so good. I, I but, keep in shape physical, but I'm not mm, riding so much. Uh, riding shape, yeah, not in race fitness, yeah. But your uh, racing, uh, like you said, your uh, it kicks in that if someone goes past, you automatically want to race. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 crazy. Yeah, yeah. I, I can feel yeah. it also. Like I told you before, um, this little track I have here next to me yeah. on the, on the yeah. CRF hundreds. Were your mates here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's it's uh, there's no other sport that can give me that uh, pleasure. Like mm. still, uh, I I only need to ride like 15 minutes or something. Mm. And then I'm I'm happy or mm. two times fifteen minutes or something. I mean, that's a good day. Got your bike fixed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that. Um, uh, yeah. Um, Got a nice picture there, that. Yeah, that's <clears throat> that's um, ninety three. That's my uh, I had a Finnish mechanic. He, he used to be a mechanic for um, Eric Ivors and uh, Joe B. Oh, yeah. Honda mechanic and. Uh, he was such a good, good mechanic, and uh, yeah, got some nice trophies uh, that year. <laughs> very nice, very nice. <laughs> do you um do you like any other sports, um, <clears throat> Jorgen? Do you watch any other sports? I I know you mentioned to me that you uh, follow the American motocross and supercross, don't you? So you enjoy that. I enjoy that a lot. Supercross, mm. and motocross, uh, the U.S. Uh, racing. <clears throat> mm -hmm. um, yeah, 
I don't know. I like ice hockey. <laughs> mm. But I personally, I, I like to do jet skiing. I have a, one of those stand-up jet skis. Uh, that's yep. very, very good training. Uh, mm. I do uh, quite a lot of mountain biking and working out at the gym. I hate being fat, so I, I try to work out. <laughs> <laughs> but keep, keep it keep it off <laughs> same time i love food so i'm, I'm yeah I'm, I'm eating too much <laughs> get on the mountain bike and work it off <laughs> yeah. oh, so, dear. Uh, no but it's um uh, yeah if i had to say to you jorgen what was your if you what's the what's been your most memorable race or event that you did that still sticks in your memory what would what would you say if I said what was your most memorable? That... I would I would say two races. Uh, mm -hmm. First one that the one from Fox and Hounds Circuit. Yeah, my first moto win. Mm -hmm. was so unexpected, and uh, both me and my father were shocked. I think, <laughs> <laughs> but also uh, my last GP win. It was. In '93, there <clears throat> uh, the last GP was in. It was very close in points between me and Martins, and I knew uh -huh. I had to win all three hits, and he had to like mess up a little bit one hit, uh -huh. and uh, I, I I got there and I won all three hits, but I still missed the championship by three points only. Uh -huh. So that was like bittersweet uh, mm. of course you're happy when you win all three hits but all all three motos but at the same time i, I lost uh, i was so close to win the the, the championship so uh, mm. so that's probably the, the most memorable memorable um, races but there's so many so many memories uh so many fun memories i i had a uh, <laughs> I can tell you another little story here from 1985 when yep. I was riding the factory Husky. Uh, I did an international race in France and I, I did pretty good. I, I think it was three heats. I won the first heat and I won the second heat and then I was leading the third heat. And uh, last lap, you came to the finish, uh, before the finish line, you, there was a jump. You jumped up on the start straight. Mm -hmm. And there was the finish line, like 100 meters. And I thought, okay, last moto, last lap, I, I, I'm going to do a wheelie. I was pretty good at wheelies. And uh, mm -hmm. to show off uh, for the French mm -hmm. uh, they, spectators, they love that uh, French. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I did a wheelie and I got my front wheel a little bit too high. So I felt, okay, I better hit the rear brake to get it down. What I didn't know was that the rear brake broke last lap so i didn't have a rear brake so i <laughs> 50 meters before the finish line i better made a big endo <laughs> oh, so I, I had to pick the bike up and uh run to the finish line but then a couple of guys passed me so i missed um, the overall oh my god but, but after the race i remember the 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 head guy of the that club there he came in, he gave me like a thousand or two thousand extra French francs because he said that that was a good show. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, That's that brilliant. Many crazy things like that, you know. Uh, it's just fun to think about it uh, now. A lot of memories. Yeah, yeah, very cool memories. It's nice to reminisce as well. Obviously, you had some uh, close friends as well at the racing and that. Was it easy when you had friendships with some of the guys? Was it easy to block that out once you get onto the gate? I know you obviously said you've got that racer's mentality, so you sort of just got into race mode. But was that difficult sometimes? Did you sometimes obviously fall out with friends and stuff like that when you get mixed up on the track and stuff like that? Yeah, on the track, mm -hmm. I was not <laughs> with anybody. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Pekka and me, we had uh, some really awesome fights and uh, we were we were not training together all the time but sometimes we were training together and you know then we came to the race and we were going for it but 
I, I would say he, most of the times he, he beat me in the GPs there, but I beat, beat him a couple of times, but he, he was amazing to, to ride with. Uh, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> Did you have any, any regrets from your career at all? As in, was there any decisions that you made from moving from one bike or a team to another? Was there any that you wish you'd gone another way or was there any other options that you wished that you maybe in yeah. hindsight? Yeah, I think I... Uh, First of all, it was not easy for me because my father, he was not a motocross rider. He had never mm. ridden because he knew nothing. So I mm -hmm. had to make all decisions mm. by myself. I had to do all the contracts. Uh, mm. He helped me with a lot of things, you know, but most things, you know, training and stuff. Uh, I had some people helping me, but uh, I, if I had like, uh, like Stefan, for example, had Harry, mentor yeah. yeah give advices and stuff so you guidance yeah yeah avoid mistakes that mm. um, that would have been nice and also mm. uh, i should have stayed uh 84 there my first gp season uh, on the honda i should have stayed another year with honda there i think because i moved to the factory husky and i like the bike but when i when i check my um results from that year and i read my um I wrote down a lot of my wrestles and stuff. I had mm -hmm. seven or eight motos that with bike problems. So I, I lost a lot of points. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I was really fast in the beginning of the year, they're winning heats and stuff, but I should have stayed on the Honda that year, I think. Mm -hmm. Just but, sort of held you back a little bit, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I should have moved to the 500cc class a little bit earlier. That's, that's my biggest regrets, but most most things i'm pretty happy with yeah just certainly had a great career um if you could uh re-race a meeting uh on a track or whatever in your prime what uh track would that be and why if you could uh re-race a meeting that you remember that you love so much um wow uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh Oh, difficult one. Mm. Uh, if I could do, do that finished GP all over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The fresh bike. Yeah. Uh, winning that uh, first motor there wasn't that. Yeah. Good. Without it stopping in the last lap, man, we're yeah. crazy. Yeah. But uh, no, you know, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't know exactly. Uh, Okay. Did you try any other motorcycle sports, Jorgen? Did you uh, ever try Speedway or anything like that? Did you try any other motorcycles? I, I tried Speedway one time when I was 15. <laughs> did you? Yeah, uh, on, a, on a big bike. Uh, okay. How did that go? Pretty good, actually. Uh, but I was yeah. I was really small guy when I was 15, so I, I was... Uh -huh. And it was a lot of power on that bike, um, so... <laughs> But uh, I, I managed to do some pretty good slides and stuff there. And um, uh, but uh, for me, it's, it's it's always been you know jumps and stuff. I, I think mm. for sure, maybe if I really tried to be a good speedway rider, I could mm. have been that. But definitely, yeah. It was for me the jumps and uh, you know hills mm. and everything that was the cool stuff. Do you know any of the Speedway guys? Do you watch any of the Speedway at all? Yeah, I watched some Speedway. We had a lot of GPs here in my hometown, Gothenburg. Mm. Mm. Uh, I watched a lot of Speedway. And, yeah. uh, um, I like Speedway also. Mm. I, I go to Swedish the Swedish Speedway GP here sometimes. Uh, I, I, it's amazing how fast they are. It's crazy. When you sit mm. close to the track, Mm. It's, uh, they are they are they are not they are not uh, afraid those guys they are <laughs> <laughs> it's impressive impressive mm. it was very cool we had a lot of swedes over in the uk as well racing all through the years and uh oh, yeah wow. especially at my hometown and that jimmy nielsen a couple of guys that i used to really like and watch Perry yeah. I know some him. good guys yeah he lives in florida i visited him yes, yeah yeah so he's, he's a nice guy. Mm. Uh, so, 
no, I I like Spieber. Yeah, hope to get him on soon as well. Yeah. That'd be good. <clears throat> He's one of my hometown heroes for racing for my team in Swindon here. Um, yeah, he was very good. <clears throat> Jorgen, if you if I put you on the spot again, keep doing that with these last few questions. Don't I? <laughs> if you would, uh, if I, if you were to consider, who would you consider as the three best riders that you've uh, ever competed against in your career? I know it's not an easy question with so many uh, guys that you race with, but if I had to push you on that, who who would you say? Uh, uh, um. I didn't race that much against Stefan, but the, the races I did, he's of course he's number number one. His mm. his numbers talks for himself. I mean, uh, <laughs> and world championships and stuff. He's he was unbelievable. unbelievable. Mm. Yeah. Eric was a tough. Uh, Propose, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, um, <laughs> I remember. You know, back there at the Motocross of Nations in '93, mm -hmm. uh, the American team there was Emig and McGrath and Kidrowski, and I, mm -hmm. I, I beat McGrath that day. He was behind me, you know, in the 500 250 heat. Yeah. I, I beat him there here. But anyway, uh, then I met him. It was quite many years ago. Uh, he wrote a book, and I was in California then. And another friend of mine that knew him, he. Mm -hmm. Um, he's sorted out that I got the book from him. So, and then he signed the book there uh, to Jorgen, the only Swede who ever beat me. Good job. <laughs> Did he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> keep, keep that, Jorgen, keep that. <laughs> <laughs> so he was, uh, of course, amazing writer, yeah. unbelievable writer. Yeah. But um, and there's so many, uh, I mean, Fortunately, a lot of the, these really, really good riders, they are no longer with us, like uh, yep. Joby and uh, mm. Paul and uh, yep. Eric and... Uh, so uh, many legends, yeah. Yeah, so, but, uh, so many big names. Uh, mm. I mean, I've been uh, lucky to be able to race with all these great uh, names. Uh, Dave Thorpe, of mm. course. What a super nice uh, person and uh, great uh, champion. Mm. So for sure, for sure. Uh, I've got a few more questions for you, if you don't mind, Jorgen. Um, if you could give uh, advice to any youngster currently racing in uh, youth motocross or whatever, and they're thinking about becoming a professional, what would your uh, advice be to those guys? Um, to be, if you really want it, you really have to go in there with your heart and, uh, mm. you really not, not just saying it, you really have to do everything, you know, mm. hundred percent, uh, training and be serious and, uh, have fun also try to have fun. Uh, I always, I was pretty good at, uh, I had a lot of strange training methods uh, you know for training technique and stuff but uh, to keep it fun and uh, I learned a lot on that and uh, being creative and uh, uh, not only doing 40 minute models all the time uh, I did a lot of technique training and uh, wheelies and stuff uh, sliding different sliding techniques, wheeling, all those things you you have to learn that before you try to go fast on the track, I think. Uh, so a lot of riding and uh, having fun on the track and uh, just being serious with your training and uh, your food and uh, everything. Mm. But having fun is the... Mm. Keeping it fun as well, yeah. yeah I think so. It's easy, to... easy to get burnt out and stuff, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, um... I was going to ask you what your thoughts were. Uh, I did speak to you a little bit about off air uh, earlier. <clears throat> obviously, the prospect of um, these uh, electric bikes and things like that. Well, there's obviously been a lot of tracks lost in different countries and things like that because of noise pollution and 
<clears throat> environmental stuff and stuff like that. Uh, what's your sort of thoughts on that? On the, maybe the future with that? Yeah, it definitely seems like that's the future. And uh, mm. I'm thinking, uh, I mean, for sure, all the big ones now, Honda, Yamaha, and mm. ATM, and everybody, they have bikes mm -hmm. uh, that are they are developing uh, now. And uh, uh, for sure, they're going to be really good when it, when it's time to to go and uh, maybe it can be a game changer for the for the sport i mean with mm. no noise and no pollution you can suddenly you can like you can start you can have races in the middle of a of a city or something mm. um, i don't know we have to see it but uh, um, uh, i don't know at the same time nothing nothing beats uh, the sound of a uh, of a fresh uh, 250 two stroke or, or <laughs> we are 500 with a, a new pipe on it <laughs> exactly that you can never get that on electric bikes but uh, no do they do uh, do you do do they do a lot of racing in sweden with all the older bikes because uh, in the uk it's sort of a bit of a craze now where all the guys ride all the evo bikes you know all the two oh, yeah. strokes and stuff Is, do they do that in sweden a lot as well yeah, it's pretty big here yeah mm. It's uh, fun, and and some of those guys, they have beautiful bikes. They uh, mm. so many hours on uh, mm. these bikes, and uh, mm. uh, beautiful, beautiful bikes. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, very nice. And they have a lot of fun with those races. Uh, just gonna show you just these last couple of photos I had on here. That was uh, you there, look. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> That's me at the training camp. Uh, I don't know what I'm telling that guy. Maybe he's, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But uh, I had so many training camps and stuff, but I'm, I'm a little bit burnt out on training camps. I don't have any training camps anymore. And uh, my my trips there to, to California, it's, it, that's not training camps. It's more like fun trips. Uh, but I, I, I used to have a lot of training camps, and uh, I think I was a pretty good trainer. Uh, always, um, yeah, a lot of fun at my training camps, and uh, a lot of technique training and uh, different stuff. <laughs> so you enjoyed that side of things. Obviously, it's a different aspect of the sport, and obviously, it's yeah, not racing. <laughs> I enjoyed it for many years, but now mm. I, I, I feel that I I think I gave most of it uh, already. I, I don't have that big motivation anymore. Uh, just, I, I mean, for training camps. But, uh, mm, yeah, no, fair enough. The nice Swedish flag on an ROI helmet there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's... Uh, that's not from my uh, racing days. You can see my uh, on my eyes there. I'm getting old. <laughs> That's probably from uh, just a few years ago. That picture. Hold on. I just got thrown out there. Are you back? Yep. Not sure what happened there. <laughs> yeah. What happened? I'm not sure. Oh. No idea what happened there. I don't know if happened something happened to the internet there for a second or what. Just. Free me out. <laughs> maybe I. Oh, maybe it was my phone. I don't know. I think it's okay. Anyway. It's okay, but uh, we're back on anyway. Uh, did I lose my photos? There it is. Yeah. So, did you keep this one as well? Have you got this? Still got this helmet with the Swedish yes. flag on it? Yes. Very cool. Very yes. nice. One from each year, and <laughs> some of them are in really good shape. Like when I was. Right, riding for a, I had a factory contract with Arai. I, every yep. year you got five helmets from Arai, and um, I had I, I made my own designs and stuff, and I painted them in in uh, Japan, and and then uh, after the season you had to always give back one helmet to Arai to for the museum. They have a huge museum. All their all their sponsored riders have to give one helmet back, and uh, but. I, I kept one one helmet, and I, I know I don't know what happened with all the other helmets, but probably I gave some to my friends and stuff. <laughs> Maybe, <laughs> yeah. But I, I'm happy I saved at least one helmet. <laughs> yeah, very cool. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's that's from uh, '92, first year in the in the 500s. Yeah. I just got uh, one more left on here that I didn't show on the podium yeah. there. That's uh, '93, the the German uh, 500 GP at the Tuchental. They still race that one at the GPs. Uh, mm, I like to watch on that track. Yeah. That's you all Smets next to me there. Yep. Yeah. Another win there. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't win the GP, but I won. Uh, won the race. One or two motos, I think. I think I got second there behind Joel. Very cool. Um, was uh, what's the plans uh, for the future then for you, Jorgen? Uh, what are you gonna be doing? <clears throat> what's the plans for you before we leave you? Uh, I really would like the uh, United States to open up so I can go back to California. I have my uh, little trips there. Uh, yes. I miss that. But uh, other than that, I've been working really hard with my house for one and a half year now to get it nice and uh, mm -hmm. almost done with that. And uh, I try to spend a lot of time with my kids. Mm -hmm. My daughter is 20 and mm -hmm. my son just turned 24 and uh, we we have a lot of fun together and they they have been uh, a lot over in california also uh, there is our second home over there now it's uh, we have a lot of fun over there so that's my uh, that's my goal to continue with that thing in the california there with my trips there mm -hmm. hopefully it opens up pretty soon mm -hmm. uh, it's so, yeah <laughs> So, uh, yeah, it's going to be nice. I, I really enjoy it. I Normally, I'm there October, November, and then I go home for a little bit, and then I'm there January, February. So uh, four or five months a year, and then the rest of the time I'm in Sweden in the summer. So Fingers crossed then you can uh, get over there soon and get back to this, get back to normal, as it were. Yeah, I hope so. I'm lucky. I have a very nice American neighbor. My neighbor over there, he takes care of my house over there. So that's been good, then. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, but uh, yeah, I'm lucky. I was able to get a house over there. It was uh, a dream for a long time because mm. in the beginning of the '80s, there I was 80, 85, 86 or something mm -hmm. I was over there. I was training there in the winter time before the GPs, training and racing in California. So I, I always liked California. So I've been thinking about it many years and then finally I decided to do something and I bought that house eight years ago. <laughs> so, wow, I bet that was cool to get a house in America. So it's, I bet it seems like an age since you've last been there. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It's, uh, uh, yeah, it's not good to stay home for 16 months. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fingers crossed that you'll get back to normal soon. Yeah, it's it's a very nice lifestyle over there. It's almost always good weather. Mm. And, uh, just put your t-shirt and your shorts on and then uh, ready to go. And good food. And uh, <laughs> so I'm getting older, so I'm starting to enjoy, you know, uh, wineries and stuff. They have a lot of ah uh, yeah, yeah yeah <laughs> yeah. That's that's a sign of you get a sign of <laughs> <laughs> like wineries. <laughs> like, like drinking wine instead of beer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I hope you can get over there soon and start enjoying things again. Do you do the jet skiing and all that over there as well, or <clears throat> over in uh, in America? Mm. No, I only do that no, here. That's in Sweden, is it? Oh, yeah. right, okay. Yeah. Uh, I see. So that's uh, that's a challenge every time to do a stand-up jet ski. It's it's very difficult. Uh, mm. But uh, slowly getting hold of it. It's a very yeah. good workout, and it's it's pretty yes. safe. If you fall, you don't hurt yourself. So it's, it's no. <laughs> I had to go on them. They're not easy to do, are they? It's not. They're not anything like a bike at all. I got on one thinking, oh, this is going to be easy sort of thing. I did motocross, but it's like, whoa. <laughs> I mean, it's not easy. 
those wave runners that you you sit on then i mean my mother could drive one of those but the the yeah. the kids the stand up ones they are it's a challenge, challenge. yeah definitely yeah, yeah. Well, i think i'd settle for a sit down <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to do those things it is a good way to keep in shape yeah definitely well, I really appreciate your time, Jorgen. Great couple of hours of you. Really appreciate it. Really enjoyed it. Um, I will, like I said, this will be recorded and we can share that out there to a lot of the people that didn't get to see it tonight as well. So that'd be uh, great for people to be able to catch up with this in their own time and as well. So that'd be great. I'll share that with you. Hopefully you can put it on your social media and stuff like that and then we'll get it out there for everyone to catch up with it. Yeah. Super nice. Thanks a lot for inviting me. And uh, uh, yeah. Really appreciate it. And, uh, Absolute and, pleasure, mate. Yep, I really appreciate it. We'll keep in touch as well. I've had some, we've had some good chats as well, so it'd be good That's to keep right. in touch. If you, Thanks, mate. If you ever come to California, come and visit me. Yes, that would be awesome. <laughs> that would be really cool. Even if I need to see your helmets. <laughs> of course, then I can teach you to ride a stand-up jet ski here. Cool, yeah, that would be they're hard work. They're hard, they are. <laughs> Or, or a CRF hundred on my on my track. Yes, that would be fun. Yeah, look like, like at that. That'd be good fun. I bet that's good fun with your mates. Yeah, it's amazing. Definitely. Actually, you know, we had a su supercross races here in in Gothenburg uh, um, back in the day, and uh, mm -hmm. not too, not too many years ago, uh, Andrew Short was here. He he raced at supercross here and he won it, and a couple of other American riders. Mm -hmm. And uh, the day before the race, they came here they, to my house. We had a barbecue here and stuff. And we rode uh, the, the riders and the mechanics and everybody. We rode on my track here. And um, wow, uh, Andrew Short, he said, uh, uh, I'm not going to ride. He was he was there in his uh, sneakers and he had a he had a. You know, like a cycling helmet, I was, yeah, yeah. A beanie on, and uh, oh, just a beanie, <laughs> All right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He said, "No, I'm not gonna ride." And he, his his mechanic was like go, doing doing lap after lap, and then yeah. suddenly he said, "Okay, give me the bike." So he jumped on the bike with his sneakers and his beanie, <laughs> and uh, he was wide open there. <laughs> was he? <laughs> And he had uh, he was riding factory Honda back then, and he, he, I mean he had the best yeah. bike in the world. And then yeah. he came here on on a CRF hundred, slow, bad suspension, bad brakes, and he had so much fun on that bike. Everybody had so much fun on that. They, it's, it's it's a lot of fun to ride with those bikes. That's the thing with the bikes, isn't it? That's the thing that was just shows that everyone's enjoyment with the, even just any the bikes like that is good fun. Yeah, it's. It's awesome. fun to ride motorcycle. It's, I would. Mm. Uh, I'm never gonna stop riding motorcycle. I hope I can ride until I'm 80. So. Yep, definitely, definitely got to get a little fix. <laughs> <laughs> awesome to speak to you, buddy. Much appreciate it. Really Thank enjoyed you. it, mate. Thank you very much. Thank and you. I'll speak to you soon. Cheers. Yeah. Take it easy, Jorgen. Thanks very much, mate. Thank yeah. you. Hi. Top man. Yeah. Bye. All, uh, all the English people. Yep. <laughs> Cheers, mate. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you very much. Bye. What a legend. Cheers, Jorgen. What a legend, Mr. Jorgen Nielsen. Really enjoyed that. Good two hours with Jorgen. Uh, good to get some, uh, a motocross one back on again. <clears throat> Did a nice one with um, Alan Graham the other week. It was uh, great to get Alan set up over at Andy Graham's house. That was really cool. Um, but yeah, I will uh, update you guys on the next sort of interviews I'm going to sort out for next week um and i will keep you all updated um always leave you with a saying from my dad bless him there he is letting the old you robin's fans are, know what i'm on about that anyway <laughs> the swindon robin's there there and uh his uh lovely comment was um quote sorry was it's uh, nice to be important but it's important to be nice so this uh try and go by that hopefully whole oh, evening as well craig just see you uh, come on as well hope you're good buddy and there's my lovely other half look good one see you tomorrow she's back from her holiday in greece she's been uh, sunning it up with my mum over there in greece keep sending me pictures of them uh, looking at albania across the water there <laughs> so it'd be good to see laney lou she's been gone for a while 12 days 
Yes, cracking insight and reminiscing. Thanks, Jorgen and Lee. Much cheers, uh, Rick, for coming on. Yeah, what a great insight into Jorgen's career. Uh, a couple of things I learned myself as well that I didn't actually know about his uh, accident as well at that time. I didn't wasn't sure about that, and uh, it was uh, good that he put the record straight on that as well because I was talking to someone the other day about uh, Marcus um, Hansen as well that he'd got injured. Um, just after he'd won the world championship and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, Jorgen actually did get uh, injured as well. And that's what pretty much ended well, what is, what ended his career, which is such a shame. He was so, to get three points away from winning the world title that year. And then obviously he would have gone on for that for sure. And he was unlucky not to win the world title that year. So he would have probably gone on and had a good crack at it the following year as well. So that was uh, terrible on that side, on the timing side. But at least he uh, got back to full fitness, which is the main concern and he had a great career on the podium with his home nation sweden in the across the nations third in world 250 world championship and second in the 500 i think he uh, had a good career anyway especially getting cut short of injury so at least he's uh, here healthy and telling the tale so it's great to reminisce with him see you tomorrow laney lou see you all soon take it easy people good night and god bless and take it all easy and this will uh a lot of the guys don't get to watch them now live when we're all out and about. Um, so uh, it's good that we can record them and they'll be on my YouTube channel and you can catch up with these anytime. So see you all soon. Ciao, Bella. Take it.